Hi, I'm Sudeshna from Marg Business Transformation. Uh, at Marg, we are into change management, uh, working with uh, various organizations in training, advisory services, as well as consulting in the field of change management. Uh, we saw a lot of groups on change management on LinkedIn, but when we saw the conversations, we felt that a lot can happen from an India perspective. Keeping that in mind, we launched this community, this change leader community in Marg, where you will find change leaders across India who have joined us in this community. And we intend this community to discuss change management, their context, the various methodologies they are using, their problems, their successes, their failures. This would help the whole community, the whole uh, organized, all the organizations which are doing change, they can learn from each other in a variety of ways. With that intent, we have this community set up. And just like any other community, we intend to tie it together with a lot of events, both face-to-face -face as well as online ones. Uh, this is our first series in that in, the, in those events, and we are starting with something which we felt was very much needed at this hour is change management as a career. Jay, why why did we choose this? Was because India is at a cusp where we see most of the people who are into change management are not full time into it either because they have other roles to perform or they are not fully aware of the potential change management can have. Globally, we are seeing the scene very different where change management has evolved as a discipline and has gone to, and change managers across US, Europe and uh, Australia are seen very crucial in every project. Keeping that in mind, we thought we will bring to the community this series on change management as a career. In this series, the first episode is on where our practitioners are talking to us on how they use change management in their respective roles. We have a customer success manager, we have an HR leader, we have a project and technology leader, all of them talking about how they use change management in their roles during the, during the critical and complex changes their organization went through. So welcome to our first event in our MARG leader community, where we are talking to our practitioners and they are sharing with us uh, their experience on change management. Today, our guest is Pratik. Uh, hi, Pratik. And, uh, and he inhabits the role of a principal customer success manager and he has worked in large organizations like Salesforce where he has carried out large scale transformation and engaged with clients in SaaS based and other digital solutions and navigating the customers into their uh, digital roadmaps and bringing them to the best solutions. I find this role very interesting Pratik as we need the best of both worlds like you know you need to be a delivery expert in the IT solution as well as you need to understand the pulse of your customer and dealing with them. So over to you, Prati. Why don't you give us a little more uh, details about what are the critical deliverables of your role? Thanks. Thanks, Sudeshna. Thanks for inviting me over. Uh, a customer success manager role is a pretty unique role and it's taking up, uh, it's getting popularity predominantly because in, in the world of SaaS business, you know, customer is actually contracted with a particular organization over a year, which means that they will decide every year whether they'll renew with a particular product or not. And as a customer success manager, our responsibilities is to ensure that customer derives value out of their investment. So if a customer has invested a particular amount with a particular product, they have a particular goal in their mind that this is what they would want to derive. And as mm -hmm. a success manager, our role, ultimate role is to make sure that the customers derive the value if they have invested X in a particular product, they get that X plus Y. And we, mm -hmm. we are there throughout this journey, right? at the beginning when the product is getting implemented 
until the renewal to make sure that we are handholding them, making sure that they're understanding our product and deriving the value out of it. So that's the high level objective of our role. But uh, you know, when it comes to revenue or cost reduction, we go one level below that. Then we will, you know, if, if there's a services product, then we'll ask our customers, you know, how do they see value from a services product? Is it true? Uh, you know, if they're adding more customers, they shouldn't be adding more service people to serve those customers. And that is why they are going ahead with the technology. So then we help them map those metrics and then ultimately derive the value. So we call it as a value pyramid where we have a revenue at the top and then we have metrics in the middle, but the most bottom pyramid, uh, bottom level of the pyramid is the adoption part. No, you will not be able to derive value, either the revenue or the cost, unless people who are supposed to utilize the product, utilize it, and not out of completion wholeheartedly. Yeah. yeah. So we mm -hmm. start at the bottom of the pyramid and then all the way walk the customer through that journey and then help them achieve that revenue or cost reduction goal and derive the value out of their investment. So you've been involved in these large-scale transformations so the, uh, what would be uh, the role of your, your what would be your role i understand that you have to be of value to the customer the product becomes useful but during these transformations when they uh, when they are in the process of you know uh, getting the new solution what would be your role in specific end to end sure so i would divide this into two is you know after the product is implemented and in the process of product is being implemented. I think customer success manager plays role in both these areas, uh, predominantly more importantly in the initial phase because the product is getting implemented. There we act as a trusted advisors. We are more of a consultant. We help them on delivery. We help them on change management practices as well. So, you know, when it comes to technology product, most of the time, a lot of focus is on the delivery and uh, the governance related to it. And in an Indian context or otherwise, the change management aspect is not taken care pretty proactively, uh, right? A majority of the customers would take that approach reactively. So they will implement a product. They will go to their users and ask, well, how is the product? If they're using it, why they're using it, if they're not using it. But that is more of a reactive approach. As a customer success manager, I come there and bring that proactiveness and, you know, you know the Prosci frameworks help me do that and run that change management more structuredly. So governance, uh, making sure that the project is delivered on time, uh, making sure that if they're facing any challenges with respect to product, we help them and setting up the change management, you know, so that when people get the ultimate product, they know what is the product is all about, why they are using it, how they are using it. Oh, great. So kind of you led me to the, my next question. My next question was, like uh, 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 like we saw you using change management after being certified. We saw you using ADCAR. We saw you using the change management principles. So how, what in change management did you use extensively? What helped you in performing your role better? Sure. So I think uh, we talked about the delivery aspect. And in the world of software delivery, there are known methodologies already. For example, you have Agile, there's a Scrum methodology. What a particular framework or a methodology does it, it puts method to the madness so that you can actually structurally do it and you can do it repeatedly. And I think I was looking for a particular structure when it comes to change management. I think we all agree that change management is important, but where to start? You know, what is the step, step one? What is the step two? What is the step three? I think uh, that's where the Prosci framework work was very helpful when I did the certification course, which led me to the process. So there is a structural process. You have a phase one where you plan the change, then you implement the change. And, uh, you know, sustaining a change was something new to me that even after the change is accepted to make sure that the change is durable over the period of time is also something that I was, uh, you know, very fascinated when I was learning. So I've used this framework for a large scale transformation. Uh, there are different tools that a particular uh, framework uh, applies or you know gives you the opportunity to apply. So in in, in precise framework, I've used risk management uh, assessment proactively at the start of the project. Most of the time, uh, the transformation, digital transformation projects are led by technology team in India. So mm -hmm. you know they fail to kind of uh, convince the senior management as to why there's a dedicated change management 
management effort required. Most of the time, people at the top believe that if there is a mandate, people ultimately fall and then uh, fall into you know their wish and then they'll use the particular product. Uh, but how complex is the change that we are actually trying to implement? Uh, and, you know, everyone would say that it is complex or it is not so complex, but what the methodology or framework does, it helps me quantify that. So there are questions yes. that you can ask to a customer. You say, okay, you know, for example, is there a change of a similar nature that happened in past, which failed miserably? If that question and the answer to that question is yes. That means when you are approaching really? this particular change, people have a, particular perception it is a lot more difficult for this change even if there is no fault of this particular delivery team but just because they have a particular project in their mind where things did not go as per their expectation they could actually have a bias about this change as well so with a risk management uh, framework and assessment we kind of quantify the complexity of the project and it helps us tell the management that this project is pretty complex and you need a dedicated change management effort to kind of during the implementation cycles to ensure that we have a success. Also, there's this process change triangle philosophy where you not only, uh, you know, focus on change management and project management, but you also think through about the success factor. How does a success for a particular customer look like, right? At the end of the day, when the project is implemented, how will we say that we are successful? You know, you know, in the beginning, I talked about the revenue and the cost of metrics and the metrics that lead to those metrics. Yes. We try to identify those success factors proactively. And uh, uh, trust me, it is a lot more difficult to do this exercise once the project is implemented because the yeah. focus there is all on adoption and utilization. You will have some teething issues like every change goes through. So it is important to do this exercise while you are in the implementation phase. The, the criticality of the sponsor's involvement, right? You know, it's not when, you know, a CFO or a CEO signs for a particular implementation, you know, gives a budget approval is their role ends there. If, if that's the case, the change is going to go through a turbulent phase uh, during the implementation and even after that. So the criticality of sponsorship. Uh, so these aspects, uh, again, quantified in a way that you ask questions, you score uh, the questions in each of these categories on change management, uh, success, sponsorship, and project delivery, and tell them that this is where the problem is. And you don't do it only once. You do it month after mm -hmm. month to see, okay, in the beginning, obviously, the sponsorship involvement will be there. But once the change, uh, you know, goes through the phase two months, three months, I've typically seen that the sponsor involvement kind of slows down. Yeah. yeah. And then you bring that to the notice of the customer that we are doing great in the project delivery phase. We are approaching it in a structured manner. But, you know, if you your sponsor is going behind the scene, then we are losing momentum. So, again, quantifying it and giving it to a customer in a red, amber, green, that this is the area that we are doing good. This is the area which needs improvement. This is where we are horribly uh, wrong and needs immediate action. So that's a process change. Triangle is a philosophy that I've used and the all favorite at car framework. I think, you know, I've used that for a large scale transformation. Also, you know, there are some small scale transformations where the entire exercise, you know, is not needed or the customer doesn't have time. But then if they still want to understand what is it that they need to know about change management then the EDCAR framework about awareness, the desire and what's in it for me the knowledge, the ability and reinforcement. I think the Indian customers were already taking care of the knowledge and ability phase when it came to having a good user acceptance test framework or having a good training programming place, but they were missing the awareness as to why we are doing it, why we are doing it now. Also, you know, the desire, what's in it for me? Uh, most of the time, uh, you know, people think that the change or the software is brought in so that my managers could watch me or supervise me better. Uh, so, a, you know, a sales rep, for example, needs to use a system, but for the benefit of manager, right? That is not the case, but that's the you know perception that is perception. there on the ground. Mm -hmm. So if with that perception or of compulsion, if people start using it, obviously you're not going to get the value out of it. So, you know, having that a car framework and tackling that awareness and desire uh, phase is something that I proactively use. So uh, the uh, 
Prosci framework also allows you to do that via a tool, Proxima tool, which I have heavily leveraged for a large scale where people can see it quantified. Uh, you know, we have those steering com meetings where those are presented to the stakeholders and then they realize it, uh, the importance of change management and just a necessary course correction can be done. So you have a lot of tools. Uh, if there's a large scale transformation, you can use all of them, but basis the complexity that you derive out of the risk assessment then you can mix and match to see what is the customer's appetite to mm -hmm. be part of this change management you don't want to overload the, them exactly. with all the frameworks and tools all the time and then you take as a customer success manager use your judgment to utilize those tools to drive change management okay and i think you are answering uh, my next question partly also you've answered but still i would put it in this way that you know uh, as a uh, like you know usual uh, oh, the we say in quotes that usually change management is associated with communication and training you spoke of a very important aspect of the sponsor buy in and the continuous involvement of sponsors in it and you know uh, making that 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 should, should be a continuous process the sponsorship element you brought in very very nicely in the uh, before so uh, so so as i was saying so, so other than training and uh, uh, you know uh, communication uh, any other aspect of uh, of change management which you have used which has benefited your stakeholders uh, absolutely. So I think the degree uh, of impact for every stakeholder is going to be different. And, you know, that is something that I have realized that there is no one fit, uh, one size fits for all. So, you know, for example, if there is a sales org who is going to use a particular product, then you have different personas. You have a sales rep, you have their team leaders, then you have regional managers, you have C CRO. The mm -hmm. way each of these, uh, you know, personas that they're, they're going to get impacted because of this change is going to be different. So mm -hmm. you know, as part of the framework, I've also used the degree of impact uh, framework of the change management, where you assess the change impact on eight parameters like process systems at times i've seen that you know you know a particular tool is going to automate a particular thing that means you know people who are going to uh, who are doing the manual work they will have to be addressed because uh, they obviously you know there's a different role that they need to play now in terms of using a product but obviously they will have a perception in that mind that what I am doing today is going to be done by technology today. So is my job going to be redundant? At times, I have also seen that, you know, the reporting structure get changed because of the change uh, that is being implemented. So identifying the degree of impact on each of those personas and then having a change management strategy based on the persona is also important. So in, in sales uh, example that I gave, I think the degree for the sales rep came out to be significantly larger than any other persona. Then the mm -hmm. what's in it for me communication for them in terms of productivity, in terms of time that they will save out of this tool. Uh, you know, they have the ability to use mobile app, which will allow them to have access to their uh, data on the go. All these factors need to be addressed proactively. Uh, these may or may not be applicable to a CRO, right? So, you know, uh, one, right. one size fits for all is, uh, is not going to help. Right. And then that aspect that which communication needs to go to what kind of stakeholders and having a differentiated persona based strategy is something that I've learned as part of this uh, framework, which I've used uh, very proactively. So now I really understand what you meant by when you said that as a customer success manager, the, that proactive addressing of uh, maybe resistance, as you can call, that you could proactively see that uh, you know, this group would be facing these challenges and addressing that. So did you, did you, uh, did change management help in, you know, spotting uh, saturation in any way or in your transformation projects? If you see saturation, do you, do you, uh, how do you address that? Yeah, so first, and it's a great question, the first uh, way to identify is whether there is a saturation or not. And, you know, I would go back to the risk assessment that uh, we do as part of this change management framework. So when you do a risk assessment, you uh, check two attributes. You 
check the attributes of the change itself and the attribute yeah. of the organization. And this yes. saturation that you're talking about comes in the you know, category of the organization attribute where the change in isolation could be an easy change, but it could be possible that the people who are undergoing change, they have gone through the change management cycles multiple times in the, uh, you know, in a particular year or a quarter. And then, you know, at times famously, they, they say me whether I should be doing my job or I should be, you know, every quarter using a separate tool, right? So whenever uh, that kind of situa saturation happens, again, uh, you have to address it proactively. Uh, if you have a bad experience, as I told you from your previous implementation, past address, failures, yeah, yeah, past failures, then address them head on. Uh, so you, you know, you say that okay, we know that this is what you know. We're going through this change multiple times. At times, you are replacing an existing tool with a new tool, and people certainly don't know why we are doing it. You know, everything was fine. I'm able to do my job. Why suddenly we are replacing a tool with a new tool? They don't find it necessary. So you address it proactively. You, you know, uh, the forums that you choose for is like town halls or you have a campaign around it and then address it. The best way to address it top down. So you address it through a main sponsor and then percolate that uh, through the sponsorship chain that you have and then the team management level. Yeah, so, so saturation could be a possibility. One is to identify it. And second is to proactively address it as to why we are doing it, uh, This why this change is necessary and why it is necessary now. Why couldn't it wait for another quarter or you know another year uh, and then address it proactively. Uh, see, resistance is going to be there in every change. You know, it's a human tendency mm -hmm. to resist change. Uh, you balance a carrot and a stick approach. Uh, if you use only the carrot approach where you incentivize people, then only few of them are going to you know, use it and we will have that adoption curve where you have ambassadors and many laggards uh, while change adoption is concerned. But then if you blend the proactive approach with carrot and stick where there's a constant communication from sponsorship as to this is uh, why we need to use it, blended with some rewards and recognition around it, uh, identifying change ambassadors, rewarding them or recognize them, then it goes a long way in the implementation phase. And by the time the product is implemented, uh, people are more accepting the change than they would otherwise. Okay, so you as a principal customer success manager, what would be your advice to your fraternity uh, on change management? Yep, so I think uh, change management, I would say, is an underrated aspect uh, still, I believe. Uh, as a success manager, I think we can be proactive in educating the customers about change management because I think what pandemic has done is it has accelerated the digital transformation. Uh, I still feel that delivery is the single most important factor that organizations pay attention to and they lose it uh, in, in the implementation phase to address the change management. Uh, from my personal experience, I would say that, you know, addressing uh, change post the changes implemented is a lot more tougher than addressing it in the implementation stage proactively. So if you take, and then people are more open to uh, addressing it as well. So if you can get your customer on board uh, on change management during the implementation stage, have your customer nominate a dedicated change manager that you can work with, right? So that, you know, uh, the same program manager is not kind of doing it for the sake of doing it. Have someone who has influence to uh, drive change, has a business relationship as well as tech relationship as a change manager that you can work with. And then uh, do it in a manner that is digestible to the customer. Don't overload them with all the tools all the time because you know the tools. Uh, just assess the change complexity, the appetite of the customer, and then uh, use your judgment to address it proactively. Thank you. Thank you, Pratik. And that was very enlightening. And thank you for spending this time with us. Thanks, Adeshna. It was great talking to you. So we are in the thick of our episode on Practitioner Talks in the series of change management as a career. Now we will hear somebody talking to us from the HR context on how change management works in organizations. 
I'm delighted to introduce to you Harsh Esrani. Harsh is in the industry for the last two decades, and currently he is with a multinational finance company as their assistant vice president, organization de uh, development. His expertise as an executive coach and a change practitioner helps him build, design, and execute solutions in the organizations. So without much ado, over to you, Harsh. Thanks, Adeshna. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure uh, of interacting with you. Thank you. So directly jumping in. So in terms of if I look at, we look at your role in the organization, what would be your key deliverables? Oh, well, if if we actually think about the context of change, uh, uh, it, it comes with a transition phase which come which is full of anxiety anxiousness uncertainty and i think hr plays uh, a very critical role in aiding and managing of those emotions maintaining transparent communication facilitating trainings uh, and education programs which if not done efficiently can impact the two most significant matrices in the hr function which is the employee turnover and employee engagement both Okay, so 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 is the uh, in your organization is the HR supposed to play this kind of a role in in addition to more in a large scale transformation? But we we do have roles defined uh, as well. While HR does play the role because we have compensation, we have recruitment, we have training function, all of that. In addition to that, we also have change practitioners within the organization who aid project-based interventions and can seek help from various functions at that level of expertise. Uh, so it's it's a mixed bag of uh, what the project demands and what is it that the HR function can enable uh, if the change is significant without those elements like, that, like I said, uh, the change would fall flat on the plate. So a lot depends on how you manage the change. So here comes the change management question of how have you been using change management or in your whole scheme of things that, that managing the way in which the change is managed, how does that fit in? Um, I think that, that the way I see this is two significant factors which allows for a change management to fit in beautifully. The number one factor is the quantum of the change, which is the number of changes that an employee is experiencing at a particular time. So for example, I as an employee may be experiencing uh, a change on how do I claim my reimbursement. At the same time, I'm also learning the change of how do I now mark my attendance while dealing with the fact that I've just been allocated a new parking spot or a new workstation. Now, these are very small <laughs> changes, but because of the fact that if they happen at the same point in time, this can really derail the employee's focus from that standpoint. So that's number one. I think that's where at an org level, if you're able to charter all the changes and then and have change management practices to maybe not just project related, but at an org level, I think that's where change management finds its way beautifully. The second place uh, where change management is is really effective and can has played a significant role is any change which impacts the bottom line matrices of the organization. We've really seen uh, a, a huge impact of that. And if, if that intersects, if there's a change with a significant impact on the bottom line matrices, as well as the quantum all the change very high. I think that's like the uh, sweet spot and the desirable dream for any change practitioner. <laughs> so, 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 what did you what do you use during a change? Meaning, any tools, frameworks uh, you all are using? Yeah, absolutely. I, this is this is one change that comes to my mind where we leverage change management heavily, uh, and and I'm sure a lot of people will relate to this. We we leverage this. Uh, for helping our employees return to office after the pandemic. Uh, now, the the one of the biggest tools that came in really handy was the ProSci Risk Assessment Grid. After we'd conducted that assessment, we were able to make a lot of critical decisions 
uh, which were called for, which were not being thought of earlier. But based on that risk assessment, we were able to make decisions on the levels of flexibility we could offer basis role. So in in our organization. Uh, some employees basis role need to come in for five days a week some employees need to come in for three days a week and now basis role one uh, a, a type of role can also come in for just one day a week it was mm-hmm. a result of that assessment that helped us uh, push into a corner where we where we had to design the flexibility options to help people come back to office post that the continuous ad car assessments helped us uh, Uh, the the needs and to cater to the needs which arrived continuously through the project. So, and we did a lot of change management activities to enable that change. For example, the top leadership coming at the first to to sure. return to office. They were the first to return to office. Uh, standardizing the messages of across leadership of why do we need to return to office, uh, and standardizing messages for the reasons of why are we offering a varied and a flexible. a flexible kind of a, right. a return to office scheme uh what role does actually require for you to come in for 5 days if those reasons and the uh the causation of that varied across leadership that would have created more resistance yes. towards the change they were so and it was that critical that the employees were a, in a stage i, I which I, i don't thing i need to explain it's it's very obvious from uh, working from home to returning to office that was anyways a big change and now i realize that hey the person who sits next to me will only need to come in 3 days or one day i need to come in for 5 days that's another level of significant uh, change that the person was going through so standardizing messages on both of why do we need to return and why the flexibility uh, was done throughout the level so that consistency of the message was maintained so do you think the leaders were had the standard message or they are also you had to play a role oh there was there. a significant role it was a top down approach that got followed a standardized deck uh, got published the the manager uh, notation of what is it that they need to say in their respective huddles that was controlled uh, so yeah a lot of that was was done through controlled uh, structural way of what piece of information what presentation gets pulled out what are the trainer notes or 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 for that what is the huddle document supposed to say it was done through a lot along with the large scale employee communications that happened in the town halls and the q and a's and the addresses and all that cool i mean that was i i think i mean more or less you know the organizations which could like you know managed to pivot at the time of uh, pandemic we as human get used to that and then coming back was a challenge for everybody which we never thought would be right so uh, so 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 thanks for that we as practitioners as change practitioners you you know the importance of managing it well but when you use a framework or when you really do change management who do you think it it benefits because it's always good for a person to measure uh, you know have those uh, indicators with you but other than the people doing change management who do you think benefits the most when we do it in a methodical manner i i don't think there's a one particular answer to who gets benefited the most i think the sponsor gets the, the benefits the management gets the benefit the project uh, team gets the benefits our stakeholders gets the benefit our employees gets the benefit our uh, practitioners get the benefit our project team gets the benefit so i think the overall element of just anything which helps people adapt change faster is 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 something that will help everybody so rather than saying who because i think the true answer to that is almost everybody gets benefit i think the most important thing it it helps is the speed with which we achieve the intended outcomes of the change or the project which is being done great and uh, like in this whole scheme of things can you think of a group of stakeholders where you really had to use the change management or you know uh, like you know it, 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 it had to be really done in that manner where you used your tools to a particular group without many getting there oh, maybe yeah. this change or any other change i mean yeah absolutely uh, so so uh, 
this this is very interesting saying that change management requires change management uh and i and i guess i speak for a lot of uh hr folks there are stakeholders want very hardcore numbers and are very number driven they understand data right mm -hmm. uh, uh what prosai change management framework has offered me is to remove that fluffiness uh from employees concern or change resistance or where people would blow up a particular concern because they have the uh, the the level and the bandwidth uh to control that it's it's now very interpretable uh for hard business leaders who understand numbers uh the change adaptation cycle from an employee standpoint i think that has really helped our uh, stakeholders just to uh, understand appreciate this uh, a lot more and i think having a very scientific way of enabling the people side of the change uh, is what really has helped our stakeholders adapt to this quicker and faster and still has left you enough and it's scientific and it's in a very interesting way but it is not restrictive it still allows you to practice your innovative solutioning uh, so to 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 influence the employee behavior and the employee action towards a change that's that that's very helpful i must say and uh, in the beginning you touched upon this so i'm going to bring back that point of when you said one employee getting impacted again again and again with the same change as we in our language call saturation so when saturation comes like how do you manage do you plan to stack it or how 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 do you like do you have to kind of do one change phase it out meaning how do you handle how does change management help you to manage that when you see too many changes on one group happening so uh thankfully because we've been practicing change management for quite some time now we are able to stagger our changes throughout the year throughout a period of time so that there's not a lot that an employee goes through at the same point in time and this is one of the biggest things that i think we've achieved as a result of practicing change management so so the the problem of saturation is uh is not a problem that we we deal with today it it definitely was the problem of the past where change management definitely came in handy so just it has helped us transition those changes of one after the other basis priority basis uh, the the bottom line matrices basis the employee feedback it just helps us plan those changes out in a better way that is one uh, secondly any with, with respect to saturation and then the resistance uh the resistance that we primarily noticing in in the kind of changes that we are bringing is very specific to changes uh not so much so of coming with other changes there's hardly any interlinkages between that so thankfully we've been able to progress from that stage uh by introducing mm -hmm. concepts of change management early in the organization great so what would be your advice to change leaders specifically from hr to like because by default i guess sometimes the people changing so the responsibility comes on the shoulders of hr to do the people part of the change and that's all change management so what would be your advice to those leaders um a very simple advice and i touched upon it earlier that prosai change management offers a very scientific and an organized methodology uh alongside with the options of flexibility and innovative solutions so my advice to all the hr leaders is that you now have a solution that can really help your hardcore business leaders get data driven uh, decision making pointers uh of the change adaptation cycle and will still allow you to practice that innovation with the employees that helps them to uh, smoothen their journey of navigating through the change that they are going through so i think now you have that balance and that final element of tool that what what you're always looking at is how do i transition between employee voice and concern and feedback to uh, to these business leaders who just understand bottom line matrices and hardcore numbers i think that is is my advice that hey help 
people with what they need. That's our role. If the stakeholders understand that now with, with ProSci, you have the ability to provide them the hardcore numbers and still uh, allow for people-oriented practices to be introduced as a result of that scientific methodology. So uh, from your role perspective, what would we, what do you think would be the top expectations during a large-scale transformation? Oh, multiple. I wish I could capture uh, them all, Sudeshna. Uh, being a sponsor of the change, being an advocate of the change, managing, supporting employees through their emotions, who are ex which they're experiencing of from this change, providing trainings to build the knowledge about this change, providing leadership trainings to maintain the effectiveness of the people managers who will coach their people on this change, uh, being the voice of employees, uh, for the project team and the leadership on how the change is being received and perceived both. Uh, that and also maybe at times where required, enabling this change through any compensation decisions uh, which are required to be made even through that. Great. Thank you. It was always nice to talk to you, Sudeshna. Thank you for inviting me on this. In continuing with our practitioner talk episode and uh, in the series of change management as a career, today we have IT director and technology leader, Vani Gopalan speaking to us on change management. Uh, Vani, as we call her, inhabits many roles in the organization. She on one hand is the COE and the technology leader, on the other, she's a mentor to the IT professionals and making them seamlessly get into the corporate world. She has been recognized in 2023 as, the, as, as one of the uh, top 10 tech leaders. And uh, she has been uh, like uh, with her passion, the way she speaks about technology in these forums, her passion uh, with which she delivers her technology projects is pretty evident. So she has a proven track record of handling end-to-end -end IT enablement for organizations. So I, if I want, I can go on for Vani. But Vani, today, thank you for coming here and speak to us on change management. It's my pleasure, Sudeshna, for being here. And I'm truly excited to speak to you about uh, change management and my journey with uh, change management. Thank you. Great, great. So, so in all your roles or your role as a technology leader, how much of it is with transformation? I would say transformation is every day, uh, being in the IT field, right? And uh, change management has really set the tone, uh, not only for me, but the entire organization and the IT, um, uh, you know, on, on the whole, on what transformation is all about and how change actually helps uh, to transform uh, maybe digital or uh, any kind of organizational initiative that is. Uh, great. So, so in the uh, so when ha so from after you got introduced to change management, I, I know you've been always using it. But when you're formally introduced to change management, how have you made uh, kind of use of it in your large scale transformation? All right. So when an organization actually creates a vision of making a change or a bigger transformation. Uh, I think the whole process or the thought process itself changes. So wearing different hats as a technology leader versus sponsor versus mentor or person who is actually uh, driving the project in itself, um, change management really gives you a very good uh, insight on what your role is going to be versus when there is no change in existence, right? So bringing ProSci, uh, and the EDCA model has actually gave me a good expertise on how do I make sure people understand what is in it for them? Because today everyone talks about change and change is the only thing that is permanent. Um, so when they talk about change in technology, there's a lot of fear that comes automatically. And uh, the project management itself focuses pretty much on the technology aspect. Like, how do you deliver and it stops there? This is what even I have learned as a technology leader when I when I was not introduced to change management. But after having learned change management uh, for so many years, I feel that there is a people aspect to project as well. And this is about how people adopt, how they uh, retain the knowledge and also how they actually sustain. So when we talk only about project management, uh, we some way 
uh, forget about sustainability. And that's where the change management, integrating change management into project management practice actually makes everything that you do to, uh, you know, successful. So I would say you need to, uh, you know, properly have these both processes married to each other mm -hmm. to ensure the great life after, after the marriage. So that is where I see. And when, if you really ask me, like, where do I uh, incorporate uh, change management? Honestly, honestly, Sudeshana, I would say every aspect of my personal life too. Like I picked up driving, you know, last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I actually sat and did that car. Like, yeah, awareness, I need it. So the desire should come from me. I don't want someone to force me, right? To go ahead and get for my classes. So that is exactly what happens in an organization as well. And let me just quote you an example of one of the uh, major project uh, that we did during COVID. And that was a great mm -hmm. example uh, how change can be incorporated anywhere uh, in whatever phase it is, right? So it was completely remote. People had yeah. no flexibility to meet each other. People had people didn't know each other. And this change has had to happen. Uh, no two ways about it. Um, so the communication strategy that we built and the four dimension of uh, integrating the change management into uh, into project management, like people, process, tools, and results. So everywhere, uh, see, change is nothing but being prepared for the worst, right? So being prepared at every phase, you're being prepared. You're preparing yourself. Okay, so what is going to happen if people resist about change? We already know that there is going to be resistance. We already know, like, you know, people are going to get saturated and burnt out if you are not communicating yeah. certain things in a certain way. And uh, there are going to be naysayers. They're going to say, like, no, this is not going to work. So how are you actually imbibing all these things together in a structured approach? How are you evaluating that? How many people are okay for this change? Mm -hmm. And how even communicating this to people in terms of what is your communication strategy? Like, some people understand in a certain way. So how is your communication style like is it looks like a very force on them or is it like easy for people to absorb and you know walk along uh, with the change so those are the deciding factors that really help versus you know when i was a project manager without knowing any change management concepts i always struggled and felt like okay so how do i put all these pieces together and and imagine during the covid situation when we were on a biggest technology upgrade mm -hmm impacted almost every employee of the organization and every departments uh, all the c-suite level without change management i can already tell you like we would have failed but what kept us together was uh, you know having the cha adopting the change management methodologies making sure there's a stakeholder analysis like you know uh, people are people are going to going to resist so who is the person who's going to support your change who's the person who's going to be a change averse and how do you really deal with them and uh, speaking to the sponsors, the sponsors also played a very vital role, like the, the, the C-suite level uh, leaders play a very vital role when you drive these transformational projects. And uh, it's not about you drive the change and you just initiate a change and you sit back. <laughs> it's about- You have to be. Along. So it has been phenomenal, I can tell you, with change management. And like I said, it's like an everyday journey for anyone who is pra practicing change in their life. Great. So uh, if I ask you, like, you know, while implementing, I can well understand from a project management perspective and a change delivery yeah. perspective, adoption perspective, you were very benefited with the change management framework. But what about in the change, the others, do you think they also feel benefited with change management? That also, which segment do you think, you know, the stakeholders are also impacted by change management? Okay, so what I can tell you is like, when, when people understand the why, behind the change and uh, the direct impact on their work, that's when they get more involved and invested. They feel invested. So if you ask me honestly, like what, which part of the organization is benefited with the change, I would say the entire organization. And uh, employees are the assets of the organization because they are the one who does the work. So I think the first and foremost uh, people uh, or the area that, that gets impacted is the employee because they know what is in it for them. And once they feel invest, once they feel they are involved, they feel invested. And uh, the second thing that I would say is, you know, even Prasai Research actually advocates and tells that uh, once you, you uh, implement or incorporate change management in your project management methodologies, your outcome actually, you're, you're, you're six times more likely to achieve success in your outcome, right? Mm -hmm. And you're also at least 
three times or three times you are you are more likely to be within the budget or within the timelines so at least the projects that i have handled at flowserve i can proudly say that it, we were within the budget um on time and of course the phenomenal outcome with great user experience and i can proudly say that it all happened because of the marriage between the change management and project management yeah of course you, yeah. Have, of course you have your lessons learned and i have to admit that but the lessons learned is also something that you already know like this is what is going to come up and uh, you know you have to have this as a homework for you to sustain the model and how people are adopting it in future so i would say the entire organization that is getting benefited um and uh, yeah so just to add on to that uh, you know we i would also advocate that there should be a dedicated change management team that focuses on this yeah 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 so that is that is an, a very important point you said that there should be a dedicated resource and in spite of that dedicated resource you are saying that still you are within your budget so Absolutely. so sometimes it is always told that you know if you bring in a dedicated meaning you are increasing the cost of the project but you are Absolutely. still within the budget so, so 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 that's kind of remarkable and in terms of you also mentioned uh, that you know you were sponsors in a few project there so as a leader what changed for you after meaning you incorporating change management as a leader it it gave me a uh, it gave me a thought process to you know step back and think like why things can also fail right so what is that you need to do proactively like when you your active participation uh, as a leader and okay. uh, you need to be active and visible in the project yes. through the project you can't just have your name on the project management slide saying that okay you are the sponsor and you don't do anything about it so that is something i've learned like you know sponsor though it's a big responsibility it's a huge responsibility but there comes uh, your active involvement as well throughout the project and i think communication is key for sponsors so when there is resistance for change when there is saturation when you see um, there is lack of participation from various stakeholders i think that's when um, the sponsors have to be there to communicate and really advocate for the change that is being driven through the organization so that is something which is key that i learned and where you need to step in and step back so you can't micromanage the project but you need to be there throughout the phase um in making sure that you are you know uh, overseeing things from a from yes. a very high level and removing the roadblocks you are you, 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 it is just that you're not resourcing and moving back but you are there throughout so Absolutely. that so that's great and uh, and i think uh, what you are saying is kind of very very relevant from people who are doing the projects and as well as leaders of the change so so so, so to conclude what would be your advice to this technology leaders i would say i think that as a change practitioner uh, there are a lot of things that you can do but uh, there are three success mantras that i would like to offer which i use it day in and day out when i manage change number one is communication so you need to involve yourself early and very often that is the key to success and how do you do it strategize a very effective communication uh, plan use the language that is understood by people which like it could be cultural impact in it and then based on the people or based on the levels of the people and then what makes it easy for people to understand like i said only when people feel involved they feel invested so in, it should be like involving them and mm-hmm. as- you play a very vital role and this is this goes without saying like communication is key and uh, second thing is um, whichever change that comes into your life in, in in your leadership journey see how you can incorporate your change management into project project management and this is a conscious effort that every leader has to make right from the inception of the project right so people may a lot of people ask questions like okay so you, you talk a lot about change management so where which area do you integrate change into for me i would say like you integrate right from the beginning you have your budget when you do your budget allocation you also include a change management team budget as well and because that is about adoption your people side of a change comes into only through when you bring in change management otherwise you're going to just be thinking focusing only about technology and uh, some aspect the is going to get missed out so that is i think as leaders we have to uh, ensure that change management and project management is uh, brought in together and uh, like i said work very closely with sponsors i think that's the biggest lessons learned i have seen from various projects where uh, 
uh, we as leaders, we think like, let's not go ahead and disturb the sponsors and, you know, let's not tell them each and everything, mm -hmm. right? Always, uh, I, I would always advise the leaders to keep the sponsors informed about um, your budget status, your timelines, and if there's any scope creep or whatever comes in, like the change, if you see any resistance for change, keep them informed so that they can be, uh, uh, you know, they, you can leverage their strength and yes. power throughout mm -hmm. the journey. So that mm -hmm. is going to help you. And these are like success mantras. So you don't have to feel uh, feel, let, let, feel let down of yourself, like if you're involving your leaders into the project. So have that open communication and you'll be the first adopter of the change. Yeah, walk the talk. Yeah. yeah. So pe see, people uh, actually, you know, they get confused if your body language and if your words doesn't match. So you have to actually play that role model and you need to be the cheerleader sometime when we when we say when we when we identify personas uh, yeah. in change management you should be the first person where people really demonstrate uh, the change by looking at you um so change is actually interesting i would say <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah too many things but yes and interesting so, so, so that was a beautiful way you ended, uh, uh, Bani. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Sudeshna. Wow. These insights are so helpful. We saw a customer success manager speak, a HR leader speak, and a technology leader speak. But could you understand that all of them, how, how they use change management in their roles during these changes in their organization? They all spoke about the, how important it is to have a structured approach in doing change management. All of them acknowledged the importance of leaders and their role in change management. The necessity of project and change management working together right from the inception or at the design stage. How important it is for people to know what is in it for them in every change. That's uh, And that's a common thread across all changes, isn't it? We need to get people together. We need to get people to buy in. Not, not to make them happy, but to make them participate in the change so that adoption is enhanced and people are able to transition to the future state in a seamless manner. If you have any questions for anybody, for any of these practitioners like Pratik, Harsh or Vani, please post it on the group. Or if you think there are any other roles like, say, in Process Excellence, Six Sigma or anybody who's doing change management I, or any questions you are facing during your change, please post it on the group and we shall get back to you with there are answers from the person who's most appropriate to answer your question. Please watch out for the space. On 18th August, we shall be hosting a live webinar from a leader, from a change leader from Europe, who shall be talking on the evolution of change management and how change management is doing as a career in the West. So look forward to see you at the webinar. Thank you.